So what is purchasing? You know, purchasing is a very vague topic, but it's also very specific. So purchasing is just going out and buying something. But some people will also see it as sourcing, where we're looking for something specific to purchase. But first, let's take a look at a typical supply chain. So when we're looking at a typical supply chain, we are, let's say we're the manufacturer here. You see that little red dot on the screen? That's the manufacturer. So if we're making a product, let's say we're making laundry detergent. So what goes into laundry detergent? Well, first we need a bottle, right? We need a bottle to hold on to it. So we have our bottle. We have a bottle supplier who has their own supplier, who has their own supplier. But then we have a chemical, because laundry detergent is essentially a chemical. If you look on the ingredients list, there's probably some chemicals we can't even pronounce. But then they have their own suppliers and their suppliers. Well, we want to know what's in the bottle, so we need a label to go on the bottle, right? So we have our label supplier, who has their supplier, who has their supplier. And then for easy shipment, we put them in a box. So we have a cardboard box supplier who has their supplier and their supplier. Pretty simple and straightforward so far. And then we have our downstream here. So our manufacturer is going to send it to a distribution network. He's going to send it to wholesalers, which will go to retailers. Might go into online e-commerce, which will then go directly to a customer. Might go to a large retailer, such as Walmart, Costco, Sam's Club, BJ's, all these other ones. All these different places are going to get that product out to you, the consumer. So if we were just to focus on the upstream here. So when we're looking at the supplier facing upstream part of the supply chain, where are we getting our products? Where are we getting our raw materials to make the product that we want to make? We need to look at, yes, our suppliers, but we need to look at the tier two suppliers, who's our supplier of our supplier. So our tier two is the next one. So for example, our cardboard box supplier, they need to get their paper from somewhere. So there's probably a paper mill that they get their paper from. And the cardboard box company makes that paper into the corrugated corrugated boxes, which then they send out to the manufacturer. The bottle supplier, well, there's probably a company that makes the plastic into little beads, and then they send the beads onto the bottle supplier. The bottle supplier shapes it into the bottle. Chemical supplier, their supplier is probably all the individual chemicals that go into that laundry detergent. Label supplier, well, depending on the bottle, might be a paper label, so we'll need paper. Might need an adhesive, because if it's a sticker. So, who has all these... If we can keep going with these tier twos by going to tier three, and tier four, tier five, tier six, and so on, until we finally get to the actual original raw material. So when you are a purchasing agent for the manufacturer, are you concerned with the tier two suppliers? Are you concerned with tier three? Of course you are. Just think of it. So a bottle is made from plastic. Well, plastic is made from oil. Oil, a part of oil is made into the plastic. So you probably want to be concerned with the price of oil. Because if oil goes up too much, that means your bottles are going to go up in price. Probably also means your chemicals are going to go up in price. And that might affect also your labels, depending on how your labels are made. So if something as simple as the cost of oil futures going up on the stock markets would increase your cost of manufacturing. Something as simple as that, but you have to keep an eye out. Or what if there was a problem with your cardboard box supplier's supplier. That paper company went bankrupt 
and that was your cardboard supplier's only supplier for their pro for that product. Well, what you what are you going to do? Because now your cardboard supplier doesn't have a supplier to make their cardboard boxes. What are you going to do for cardboard boxes then? So you see how you are kind of responsible for them while you're not ensuring that they survive as a company, but you need to know what's going on in the world that may infect, impact your company. So to help us with our decision on what to do, we have our SCORE model. This is a supply chain operations reference model. So we have our plan, source, make, deliver, return, and enable. So here, under planning, you know, it's a pr our planning process helps us use resources to generate and fill demand to meet our financial plan. The company wants to be profitable, so we need to have a plan on how we're going to do that. And supply chain is a major factor for that. You know, our source, we need to find the best suppliers out there for our organization. It could be something as simple as choosing between Office Max and Staples, or it could be as complicated as choosing do we want to go with Sitgo Gas or do we want to go with BP for our fleet of trucks? You know, who's going to be our fuel supplier? Or it could get even more complicated by who are we going to send our recycling materials to? You know, what are they going to do with it? Are they just going to put it in crates and ship it off to another country? Or are they actually going to process them and try to recycle them? You know, all these things you're going to have to figure out. So are we going to make the product that we want to have? This is going to come down to our make versus buy decision. So our source would be the buy and our make would be built and actually make it in-house. We're going to deliver that item whether we make it or we buy it to our customer. So we need that logistics, both inbound and outbound, because we need to get in raw materials and send outbound the pro finished product. So every company has returns, and whether that's going to a returns desk at Walmart, Target, or it's you put it in a bag, you slap a shipping label on it, and you wait for UPS or put it in the mail, there's a returns process. And how does your company enable that returns process? And then our last thing here is enabling. So this is allowing all these activities to happen and create value from these activities. It's one thing to let them happen, but we don't want to have the busy work that does nothing for our company. We want to add value to our company and to our customers. So here's how the actual score model looks like. So we kind of went over the top part. So our plan goes from left to right. Same thing with our source, make and deliver. And then return goes the opposite direction, back to the left. Our enable goes back and forth because we're enabling everything to add value. And here at the bottom, you'll see that we have our supplier supplier, our actual supplier, our company, our customer, and our customer's customer. If you look at it, everybody has the same score model. It's just, where do you put your focus? Are you looking at your supplier? Well, if you're a supplier, you would shift it, where you're looking at your supplier in the center. And you would shift it the other way if you want to look at your customer. So we would call that our focal company, our focal point, what the company or area or level that we're looking at. So while we do have the score model, we do have what are known as the seven rights of purchasing. So it, it's, we have to figure out which one's important, but they're all important. So we gotta go and obtain the right material in the right quantity, at the right time, for delivery at the right place, from the right supplier, with the right service, at the right price. So out of all of these, which one is most important? Now I know the graphic's giving it away, 
but the supplier if we can get the right supplier a lot of these are going to be taken care of already because if we can get a quality supplier we know they're going to deliver it to the right place we know they're going to get delivered on time we know we're going to get the right quantity the right service at the right price we know a lot of these if not all of them are going to be taken care of but that doesn't mean that we don't pay attention we always pay attention and evaluate our suppliers so with our seven rights of purchasing you know we have that last one at the right price well how do you figure price do you look at the price of the purchase or the total cost so let's let's look at the lowest possible total cost because that's what we're trying to go for in purchasing here so of course we have our purchase price variance we have our actual cost minus what we budgeted for it and then we're going to multiply the, the sum of that by the quantity so we can actually see how much we saved or how much we overspent based on that formula it's the purchase price and variance then we have our total cost of ownership which is our acquisition price this is the price we paid for to get the material or get the product then we have our net present value which is the sum of our ownership cost plus the end of life costs so think of it our think of it like a car you bought the car for I would say ten thousand dollars well, the ownership cost would be the maintenance, the oil changes, the repairs, tires, brakes, all that kind of stuff that you need to do to keep that car operating. And then, what are the end of life costs? Well, are you going to take it to a scrapyard? Are you going to sell it on? So, the end of life costs could be a minus end of life costs or a plus end of life costs. If you have to pay for it to be taken away, then it's an addition. If you're going to get money for it being taken away, then it's a subtraction. So if you had a car that cost $10,000 and it cost you $2,000 in ownership costs, and then you sold the car for $1,000, well, that car technically cost you $11,000 in the end. Now that's, I didn't factor in insurance and all that, but that's total cost of ownership. I know I kept it really simple, but this formula can get extremely complicated when we get to the ownership costs. Because it's real simple to figure out what it costs to buy, because that's what we actually pay for it up front. The end of life costs, you know, that could be, all right, if it's a big piece of equipment in our warehouse, the actual cost of having it removed the labor cost of having it removed. It might have to be disconnected. We might need electricians and other specialized trades to come in and disconnect it. Might need a crane. All those go into the end of life costs. So anyway, these are two factors or two formulas that we need to consider when we're doing total cost. And we want to make sure that we're getting the lowest possible cost, but we're also maintaining the, a good value for our company. So next we're going to talk about evol our evolution of purchasing. How did we get to where we are today? So I look forward to seeing you on the next one.